it, it's it's confusing, unexplained, for unexplainable. And again, they 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 assume because they rely on dogma. They have certain truths that they hold to be higher than reality. They they hold a certain position to be more important than observation because they feel that way. They assume everyone else does, and that is simply not the case. One of the most freeing parts of not being a theist is abandoning your dogmas. Is is letting everything depend on observation, empirical feeling, uh, tentative beliefs, tentative uh, uh, values. That that these are all things that we can adjust to. We can say that slavery is wrong without looking over our shoulders at you know what's what's in the scriptures. We can decide what is what is moral and immoral without saying you know is is this in line with God's morality? You know that that's the freedom that comes with not having a dogma that you live your life by. One of the things I was going to raise with Andy, and I have a lot that I was going to raise with him, um, all of which are pretty much based on his um, video that he posted. Using the fine-tuning argument, I think, has got to be one of the most desperate attempts by theists. And the points that I was going to put to him, I mean, I can't remember quite how he put it in his video. It was, look around you, isn't everything wonderful, which is a normal sort of uh, stuff you get. Well, look around you, and everything is not wonderful at all. If God made the universe for us to live in, he used far too much material and a lot of wasted space. What's going on with a universe 20 plus billion light years um, in diameter, possibly substantially more than that. Um, so much, so many places where we could not possibly survive. You only have to go a few miles above the Earth's surface, a life becomes, unless you're um, in a spacecraft or something, absolutely unsustainable. I think, and I don't know whether this, where I got this figure from, but um, forgive me if I'm wrong, I think about 4% of the Earth's surface is actually habitable. If you go a few miles under the Earth's surface, you get into trouble as well. You're not going to survive there. Then this finely tuned universe, God made a sun which is going to run out of fuel and in its death throes will consume this planet. He then has the Andromeda galaxy heading towards us on a collision course, which is going to obliterate everything. But no, look around you, aren't the trees beautiful? Well. Yes, look at the trees, and then also consider smallpox virus and syphilis. God created all of that too. Um, you can't pick and choose in this way, I'm sorry. Swans and syphilis, to use a quote from Hannibal Lecter in Silence of the Lambs. Swans and syphilis, you can't pick and choose. God made it all. You've got to take with the good with the bad. And the only thing that they can come up with that was, oh, of course everything was perfect before Eve took a bite out of a piece of fruit. What a load of bullshit. And what I find absolutely extraordinary, and I'm sorry, I know I'm ranting a lot today, I find it absolutely extraordinary that in the 21st century, given all the progress that we should and have made, there are still so many people that actually buy into this utter, I've got to stop swearing, utter crap. End of concordance, I'm sorry, end of my rant. Um, pick up on something whilst I try and find another caller. I, it's frustrating because ignorance is very scary for people. Ambiguity is very scary for people. And I think it is our nature to come up with stories. As you say, you know, ignorance is the root of all knowledge. Uh, that when we're presented with things we don't know the answer to, that's when we get scared. But science is the process by which, the tool by which, we can begin to find those answers. And that's why I mentioned the idea of a box buried under the ground. You can't know what's in there, but you can still eliminate certain possibilities. Not because they're necessarily impossible, although they might be logically incoherent, you can probably still discard them. But what you can do is come up with likely answers. And that's really much more what the scientific processes are. When we say the Big Bang, it's because, yes, we can never go there. We can never observe that. But what we can observe is 
the evidence, the likely explanations, the evidence, the the explanations that have some meaning. And if your answer is magic, you know, the box is down there because uh, Bigfoot and an alien buried it and inside is Tinkerbell. That's it's not an answer. It's it's not it's not satisfying to a scientist. You know, it may be satisfying to you if you believe in fairies, but it doesn't tell you anything about what's actually inside the box because it's not a logically coherent thing. It's not it's not explanatory in any way. You know, Thunder's favorite phrase is what is it? Models of explanatory utility. That's really all science is. And when they're not explanatory, again, we abandon them. And you can read a history of science book and see the littered carcasses of failed theories. They're out there. Um, even today, you know, there are probably theories that we are seriously advancing that will be abandoned, will, will be rejected. And that doesn't trouble me in the least. It's, it's something totally I'm agree. very comfortable and what with. I, what I find absolutely extraordinary is how people can be satisfied with such a vacuous explanation as God did it. I, I, I just, I find it staggering. It doesn't answer anything. Oh, I'm exasperated. Anyway, hopefully we are joined uh, by our next caller, uh, Aaron. I'm used to calling uh, Aaron Aaron. Aaron, are you with us? Uh, yeah, it's, I guess I'd say Aaron, but just the Aussie accent difference, I suppose. We're so no used problem. to saying Aaron. <laughs> yeah, it's Aaron weird gets how very, he spells very, his name. very, very uh, particular about uh, how you pronounce his name, um, and I'm kind of used to it. But anyway, um, what have you got for us today? Um, uh, I guess I'll move away from Andy because I don't know. No, no, he's I, I just feel a message that you wanted to comment on some of the things that he said. So please do. Okay. Um, I just. I don't understand or I find it confusing um, how someone who claims he's not uh, not religious, I guess, just wants to attack um, atheists for not understanding. Like, atheism isn't trying to say that it, it understands that how life began completely or how the universe began completely. And it just it frightens me that it's like they think there's this, it's like an enemy approaching them. And they're coming at them, so they must have an opposing idea about what they think they have an idea about. But what they don't understand is, is they're getting it, you know, confused. They we're not saying we know, and they are saying they know. And I just, it just got mind-boggling, really. I think the 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 word you used there that was um, interesting was there's an enemy approaching. Um, I think you may be right. So give me your thoughts on this. Um, do you think that Andy and the likes of Andy? Um, are becoming concerned about the increasing volume that atheists are making. I'd say poss very possibly. Um, I mean, I have a couple of friends. Most of my friends here in Australia, I guess it's the Aussie thing, apathetic, I guess, nature that we have where there's people say they're atheists, but they haven't ever really considered the question or considered whether or not, you know, um, God does exist or not. I mean, I was a Christian for most of my um, early life and eventually sort of just as of getting older, sort of maturing, I suppose. Well, that's how I see it, not to be offense, you know, demeaning to theists, but uh, that's how it feels. Um, but, um, well, yeah, and unfortunately, being offensive to theists uh, is so easy to do because they're so delicate and sensitive. Um, and um, this is because they think that they deserve some sort of right not to be offended uh, and I'm sorry I, they get offended by you questioning their faith I, I, I mean I don't see you how you can have any sort of dialogue with a theist without offending them they're, they're it's that supposed to be concordance so it's, it starts to be uh, like in the evolution creation debate it's, it sounds like uh, two sports fans uh, debating the merits, merits of their favorite, favorite team you know <laughs> the, the level of of discussion on the actual science is usually pretty low uh, if you sort of bandying words because it comes down to you know no no you didn't uh, no it's not it, those kinds of just very basic it, it's a shame and that that's maybe what scares a lot of people away actual scientists from these discussions is the level of scientific discourse is so low that it just becomes uh, 
tossing insults back and forth. And just my and my particular friend, one of the, one of my particular friends, he you basically get to this point where it's like he hears a voice that he says is the voice of God, and it can't possibly not be the voice of God. And if it is not the voice of God, he needs to be locked in a mental asylum. And I just find that, and he says, and I'm like, what about people that do hear voices? He goes, they should be locked away in a mental asylum. And I'm like, is this really? He, so he feels that because he's, it's God, he's got it, it right. shouldn't be. In a he's not the, he's not the lunatic. Everyone <laughs> else is. Yeah, I, I just, it's very, it's confusing. I mean, how I, could this, I, this I, millions I, of I'm people. interested about this, though, because it is undoubtedly the case that a lot of this. They certainly claim to have a personal relationship with God. They feel something. And I am assuming that they're being genuine when they describe this. I, I'm just so curious to know what that would be because um, I, I've never had any sort of similar experience um, with with some entity. What, I mean, well, do you, do you yeah. question your friend about it and seek to find out what I mean, what is the nature of the voice? Is it is it inside his head? Is it audible? Uh, would other people? Have, I mean, that's the sort of thing I'd be asking him. Yeah, I I I bring up these sorts of things. I mean, I guess because I was I was a Christian earlier on in my life, um, but I got to a point where I was maybe sixteen, seventeen, and I really was trying to, you know get this thing going like I wasn't trying to throw it out I was saying well if this thing really works it will work and the thing is I would say to people you know at church and others that you know I'd be like I can't hear a voice that's auditable that isn't mine in my head I, I just know that it's my own voice in my own head and they go well you know God that that is God one person would say and then other people would say oh you got to sort of, I don't know, you keep searching sort of thing. And, and he thinks it's, I mean, it's literally what an audible speaking. voice. What, what yeah, well, of his voice apparently was. English. Um, English, you know. of course. Come on. Oh, yes. Well, if English is He's good not enough a for Jesus, it's good enough for God. For God. <laughs> He's not one of those filthy foreigners. Of course, he speaks proper American English. And his wife. No, and blonde I have an Aussie Do accent. I? Aussie accent. He probably says g'day to him. I don't know. No. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, there's another point that I want to bring up quickly before I remove him from the contacts. Andy, uh, after departing uh, the show, uh, sent me another message saying, As I have said on many occasions, atheists have no hope. We theists have a hope! Exclamation mark. I, again, I simply don't understand. I'm not going to bring him back on. Um, I don't understand what he's trying to say. What? It, where is the hope? Um, what? Are the hope in an afterlife, or hope generally? Can I hope that my football team hope. wins their next match? Is that hope? Do I not have hope because I'm atheist? Or is it all about afterlife? I have no understanding. Does anyone understand? I know it's a, it can, a tall order. Does anyone understand what Andy You know, hey, people saying? who play the lottery have hope of being rich, right? People <laughs> who play the lottery have hope of being rich. So people who play the lottery have hope. People who don't play the lottery have no hope. QED, Andy. Chew on that one. Um, Oren, you mentioned that the fact that you were a Christian um, earlier on in your life. I don't know how old you are or whatever. Um, I'm always curious to hear people's stories and if you're prepared to um, divulge and let us uh, know uh, about your deconversion, I'd be very, very interested. Yeah, not sure. I just didn't want to bore everyone if they weren't interested initially. Um, well, basically, I suppose I was, I would call it slight indoctrination because, uh, my mother and father took me to church when I was, you know, in my primary years, I suppose. And, um, basically my parents got divorced when I was about eight or nine. And, um, the, what I found out later in, later in my life, as in only just recently, I'm, I'm 22 now, that, uh, that the church that my mother was going to see, my, my father was abusive to my mother. And they were having marriage counseling within the church and the church was reading doctrine about how the woman should be submissive in the relationship and she must be doing something to instigate this aggression and then all these sorts of things. And to me, that's completely backwards. It doesn't matter how much someone ticks you off. You should never get physical with them. And, um, anyway, uh, this was not going on earlier on. This is what I've discovered now. But when I was um, maybe in my 
preteens, I suppose, I was going to church once a fortnight and then the other week I wouldn't be at church. So it was like I had a secular family on one half and then I had a you know, religious side or religion-ish family on the other. And it was interesting and I thought to myself, this is garbage. Why should I be half-half? I've got to be one or the other, you know. If I'm into this thing, then I need to get into it. And then so when I was sort of an early teenager from like, maybe 13 to like maybe 17, 18, I really pushed for it and I did stuff, worked in the local youth um, group and, uh, you know, tried to study the Bible and, you know, tried to do all the right things, tried speaking in tongues, tried all these sorts of things. And I had an interesting conversation with a youth leader. Um, I think I was 18 at the time. And uh, I basically just said, uh, look, I can't feel it anymore. There's no feeling there, this buzzy sort of feeling that I used to get when standing in church or at youth or listening to the music and the, what, the hymns and whatnot. You know, I don't feel it anymore. And she said, you're just maturing and uh, you have to decide for yourself whether you believe that this is the case. And when she said that, I just stepped back and since then I've just gradually, I haven't been going to church and I pretty much now claim that I am an atheist in that, you know, I don't think that this Christian idea of God is sufficient to, you know, explain anything really. The, the, a couple of things. Um, the second one, I'll come back to the second one. Um, but when you made that decision. Did you, I, I don't, I'm not familiar with what the makeup of uh, religious belief is in uh, Australia. Did you find it difficult uh, telling people or have you maybe not told everyone, family, friends that, you know, oh, I'm, no. I'm an atheist? Well, in the example of my father who still goes to church, um, I don't bring it up too often because I've brought up certain things with him, but I sort of just figure I'll let him ask the questions if he really wants, but he sort of avoids it. Um, in terms of friends, like I said, a lot of my friends are very apathetic about it. Um, if I was to turn around and say, oh, I'm not religious anymore, they'd be like, yeah, you're an idiot for thinking that in the first place <laughs> kind of thing. But I, I, I mean, I disregard some of them when they say things like that because I don't think they've truly considered it. But anyway. Um, the, the second yeah, point I wanted to talk about, you, you, you mentioned trying to speak in tongues. Um, this has always been uh, one of those <laughs> curious points to me. I mean, you tried it. A lot of people apparently find it successful. And I, I do recall um, talking to someone, I think, on one of the previous uh, shows uh, who said that they spoke in tongues when they were young, um, early teens, maybe slightly younger than that. Um, and they said at the time they knew it was all just a complete joke. They didn't really think it, take it seriously, uh, which I thought was odd because when you see the, the likes of... Um, Jesus camp with Becky Fisher or whatever. Um, it seems that these people aren't just playing along and pretending. They seem to find it quite real. But what, what happened when you tried to speak in tongues? I mean, did you, were you tempted just to come out with gibberish just to keep the, the pastor happy? Well, it, when the, the main, the particular time would be like, cause I was in the youth group, um, sort of in the leadership section, I suppose or training leadership section and uh, we'd have prayer meetings before the start of the night and we'd all sort of get together and and I'd heard stories about how people had apparently supposedly spoken in complete different languages to their own that were audible so I don't know speaking in Latin or, or these sorts of things when they didn't understand the language to begin with and I thought this must be it that must be it, you know. I, I must speak these words and they must be in different language, you know. And it's just like, I mean, it just felt silly. And you just end up copying the people around you. Like you're in a room, you can imagine you're in a closed room, people have their eyes closed and everyone's just, la -da 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 -ma -da -ma -da, you know, different like you know, sounds. And it's just like you just end up just, and you, and you walk away and you go, oh, that wasn't anything supernatural. That was just, <laughs> I mean... I don't know. I, and yeah, I, I can't remember exactly uh, which passage of the Bible all of this stems from. Um, do you happen to recall? Uh, not, not specifically. I, I know it's in, it's in one of the, because um, I know it's in one of the. Uh, Anyone in the, John in the Mark uh, watching or... happen to remember which chapter and verse it is? I know it's only like one sentence in the Bible. 
If anyone does, to post it, we'll see if we can find it. Might be, yeah, it's, I think it's one of the Gospels, or one of the books of those those guys, John and Mac, Mark and Matthew and all that. But, um, because, I mean, some sides of Christianity just ignore it or don't even, yeah, think that it's not well, one some, of the good bits. Not only ignore it, they think it's actually positively evil. It's the devil working in them. This is what I love about it different denominations of Christianity and then touch interpretation of the Bible. Some think, you know, it's divine to speak in tongues and some think it's the work of the devil. Um, so we've got, <laughs> hang on, someone's just helped us out. It's ADT again. Uh, follows a reference speaking in tongues. Mark 16, 7. Okay. Uh, can I, I ask Andy, that. or can you ask Andy in chat, like, I thought he wasn't specific to a religion, but he seems to know a lot about this this Bible, this he, Christian he's Bible. He switched and changed a bit. He was a Christian and then he was a creationist. Then he wasn't a creationist and accepted evolution. And now it's unclear. I have no idea what he is, but uh, he's got some understanding of the Bible. I'm going to find um, Mark 16.7. Uh, concordance, you're going to have to fill in whilst I'm away. La, 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 la. <laughs> 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 You know, I wasn't sure if you had anything to fill in with. Yeah. <laughs> I wish Aaron were here for uh, some compare and contrast to other texts because I think that's very interesting. And I think that's a valid point of study is, is the psychology of religion. If it's studied as uh, an anthropo anthropological uh, field, the, the kind of things that people come up with, you know, the commonalities in the creation myths and the commonalities in the supernatural powers that followers are granted. And I, I have a feeling that you could categorize the types of deities that grant these certain powers. Because uh, I can distinctly remember one of the Egyptians gods, Egyptian gods who um, would grant his followers the ability to read and understand other people's languages. And they, of course, became the scribe. It was Ta. Uh, he would grant the ability to, to read and understand other people's languages. And, and you have to wonder how much sort of uh, syncretism, uh, how much these, these things sort of became, you know, my God can do this. Well, my God can do that too. Uh, and then you put it in the book, and then pretty soon <laughs> everyone sort of has to fulfill it. But there's a really marvelous insight into human psychology when you say, I bet you can't that someone will automatically say, yes, I can. And then there becomes well, this whole know, or you religion don't behind well, it. I do. Yeah. And it's the argument from ignorance again in a slightly different way. You know, it's the defiance of reality. You know, reality sucks, man. I'm <laughs> coming up with a way better reality where I can fly in the sky and I can heal people with my hands and I can, you know, kiss snakes. And I'm just, you know, I'm Chuck <laughs> Norris, dude. So, you know, that's that's kind of what it seems like we're tapping into is the whole Chuck Norris fantasy of I can do anything. And I, I know for a fact that Christianity is not the first to come up with these things. You know, the, the cults, the thuggy cult, all those. I don't even know how, how many of those are, are real or just sort of distorted through um, history and, and the way they've been written about. DPR, I'm that's done good. stalling. <laughs> so I've I've got um, uh, two Bibles. Do you want the uh, King James or the New International? This is the. Hang on a second. Do they have this marvelous new thing called the Internet. Oh, yeah. so I, I prefer to feel the book, uh, Matthew. Oh, you prefer, prefer oh, sorry, to feel Mark the what? Sixteen seventeen. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out uh, devils. They shall speak with new tongues. So there you go. Thank you, ADT, for that. 